Hello folks, how you doing? How is life? Let me know in the comments below. So as I'm flying in one of my favourite J aircraft, the Piper Warrior by Just Flight, in MSFS 2020, I just thought I'd uh, have a bit of a discussion about TAA versus DLSS and what are the fours and against and what's my opinion on it now that DLSS 4 has been out for a while. So basically, you know, <laughs> the thing is, TAA mode is a really nice anti-aliasing that favours flight simming more in the sense of when you're looking at glass cockpits and in fact even this here with the beautiful steam gauges this GTN 750 doesn't look as sharp as in TAA mode now that isn't a Sobo thing more than a DLSS thing but it's just true even looking at this screen here it's not quite as pin sharp as TAA mode and sometimes that kind of is annoying especially if you're flying IFR or you're really needing to look at your instruments and the instruments you're looking at are glass cockpit the thing is about DLSS it does give you better performance now transformer mode DLSS 4 I'm using it right now preset K is definitely heavier on performance than DLSS 3 but you get much better visuals and it's still better than TAA mode by about 10 frames per second, maybe 15, depending on what sort of setting you have. So it is still very, very good. In terms of DLSS performance, if you're struggling with um, you know, FPS and all that in VR, then DLSS 4 is really, really good for that. But you are going to lose clarity even with preset K, transformer mode, using glass cockpits and just general sort of screens like this. However, there is a big advantage, of course, other than the performance, which I've just said, and that is the clarity of the scenery is way sharper than TAA mode. I'm not quite sure why that is the case, but it just looks way sharper, as does steam gauges as well, like all these gauges here, and just the textures, it looks so much sharper. So there is a trade-off there, guys. There is a trade-off, as we're about to fly over Humberside here. Oh, it's beautiful. This is, as I say, MSFS 2020, which in my opinion is the better sim for VR currently until sim update 2 comes and even then I'm not entirely sure that's going to change a massive amount. Yes it might fix some bugs but uh, you know the whole sim is a bit of a mess at the moment especially when it comes to stability. So I'm in the Pimax Crystal at the moment at native resolution and the clarity I'm getting with DSS4 is fantastic and even I can forgo some of that lack of clarity with these sorts of instrumentation here, with this display and this. It's still sharp enough for me, um, but it's of course not as sharp as TA mode. The other disadvantage of DLSS 4 and DLSS 3, it's not quite as bad with transformer mode, but it's still there, is this here. This is a good example right now. I'm not sure if you can probably see that. If I zoom in, there is some ghosting between these numbers because the estimated arrival time is shooting all over the place at the moment because I'm just basically not following the flight plan. It's starting to stabilize a bit but if I just change the power setting again and go slow and then go fast again you can see it's changing the numbers and there is still some ghosting there of the numbers. It's not as bad as DLSS 3 but it is still there. If that bothers you then again DLSS 4 is not for you at the moment. The great thing about this technology is it's brand new and I do feel the AI algorithms are going to get better and all these presets, by the time we get to preset Z, <laughs> you know, we might have really good ghosting. I mean like no ghosting and, or minimal anyway, and better performance. So unfortunately guys, you've got to pick your poison. There is not an ideal best setting for VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's simple as that. And 
my personal preference this is how i do things now okay if you're interested because you know there's many different ways that you can do things but if i'm flying like this which is often what i'm doing in the sim is enjoying ga flying most of the time i am now using dlss 4 because the clarity difference of the scenery the fact that I can run my crystal at full native resolution and really enjoy incredible shot visuals and get about 10 to 15 frames per second more is a no-brainer for me, really. It's, uh, it's superb. And that's my preferred way of using the sim now. However, if I'm flying IFR or any reason that I need high clarity only when using glass cockpits, then I'll stick to TAA mode and I'll downscale the resolution of my Primax Crystal in the OpenXR toolkit to my preferred 3500 by 4142. You can also uh, change that in an easier way if you don't like using the OpenXR toolkit, just downscale it to around 70%, 75% in the Pimax Play software. And that is how I use the SIM now. Because, I mean, it's great to have those two methods and depending upon the flying you are doing, I do feel DLSS 4 or TA mode is going to be better for you. Another good example, I'll put some footage in now of a recent video flying the Just Flight Hawk. In this video, I'm using DLSS 4 because really I'm looking outside the cockpits and the aircraft in question is, you know, it's steam gauges and the whole experience is superb, really super sharp, very, very nice. And I think for this flight, I used uh, preset uh, K and the DLSS quality set to balanced. And even performance is not too bad now. It's, you know, the clarity is still definitely decent. But if I was flying the CRJ or if I was flying an airliner or TBM into the Isle of Man, you know, looking at the gauges and I needed that crystal clear clarity, and no ghosting with the numbers, then I would use TAA mode. Now once the 5090 gets in, and sorry guys for the delay, like everybody else, I'm struggling to get one, but once I uh, receive it, I'll let you know guys, and I'll give you my thoughts and impressions. Maybe that 30% extra performance headroom will be enough for me to enjoy TAA mode all the time. But uh, even then, I think I'll still use DLSS 4 because it's actually sharper um, when you look at the scenery. And by the way, here's another tip for you. Look at my settings right now. That's not what I run. A Sabo, for some reason, has decided to change my settings. <laughs> I don't even know why, but sometimes this sim defaults to like a ultra setting profile for VR. So just watch out for that. So I'm now gonna just change this quickly, which also gives me a good opportunity to show you what I'm doing here. So train level detail, I leave that at 150 in 2020. Um, you know, you. It does run better in VR. Clouds I set to high because the big difference between high and ultra. Uh, text resolution should be at ultra, especially on a 4090. AF filtering, that's fine for a 4090 or 4070. Um, even a 3080, 3090. Texture synthesis, leave that on high. Water waves high. Shadow maps. I always keep these down because they're poorly optimized in the sim. Contact shadows, I'll leave that, well, either off or uh, low, to be honest. Windshield effects, you want those nice um, rain effects on the canopy. Ambient occlusion, that's a heavy hitter in 2020. Cubat reflections, keep that low. Ray march reflections, take that damn thing off. Light shafts, keep that on medium or low or even off, but uh, light shafts is a very nice effect. Bloom, take that off. Cockpit refresh rate, set to medium. And traffic, let's see if they've changed that as well. Nope, they've kept that the same. I have leisure boats on ultra. Ships and ferries, um, animals, you don't get so many animals in 2020, so I leave all that on. And then road traffic set to about 20%. That can hit your CPU. And this is the reason why this is so low is because I use FS traffic. There we are. Apply that. And suddenly I've jumped from 35 frames per second to 48, 50 to 53 frames per second. So there we are, folks. So there we are folks, just a quick video, the fours and against for DLSS versus TA mode. I use both depending on what I'm doing and what I'm flying. 
and uh, that will do for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Take care and bye for now.